as Federal Ministry of Environment, we are not the, the first line regulator for most development projects. As you have a situation whereby the immediate uh, regulators, you know, you sub, permit me to use that word, you sub the powers that the law has vested on the Federal Ministry of Environment on environmental issues. And when this has been done, by the time these projects now come to us for environmental uh, certification, we will just be like we're running from pillar to post. The sites would have already been uh, selected. You know, in some cases, the work would have already started. So we will just now be, try to see how we can increase the mitigation measures that some of the impacts that we perceive will emerge from these uh, uh, projects, uh, 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 measures to addressing those uh, impacts. Uh, and uh, without trying to trade banters here, we've not really had the cooperation as it were that we expected from the Department of Petroleum Resources as far as environmental issues in the oil and gas industry is concerned. And I'm also in the same vein uh, tell you, Mr. Chairman, sir, that uh, the Nigerian Post Authority has been very, very supportive and cooperative you know, with the uh, Federal Ministry of Environment on these matters. I can say that when the Post Authority changed from being a port operator to a port regulator, one of the areas that they took very seriously was the environmental issues. And from that point onward, you know, a lot of uh, uh, activity in terms of environmental uh, governance, as far as these tank farms uh, operations are concerned, have been well and adequately taken care of. In terms of uh, location, uh, I would want to say that by default, these tank farms are located where they are because one they are close to deep uh, river channels and then also close to seaports and most of those areas were pristine areas and uh, by the time you start relocate, uh, establishing these tank farms to meet the challenges that the country was going through in terms of fuel distribution in those days yes certainly uh, communities begin to creep in these things are very easy to see. If you take a Google map, you know, there is this timeline. You can take it as far back as 12, 15 years, look at satellite pictures, see where these tank farms uh, were established, and then as communities begin to creep in, you will, you will see the progressive uh, encroachment, as it were. Maybe one of the failures that we, uh, we had then was would have created a very large buffer area where the tank farm owners would buy and just live like that, such that they would not be able to to, to creep into. So, sir, whatever the, yeah, the the deliberations of this committee will help us in government to see how the synergy can be better improved and uh, enhanced, and I think everybody will be better off for it. So, I would uh, want to call on my colleague to just give a few remarks on the uh, Ogara sector of uh, tank farm relocations. A few of them have come to us for for environmental uh, certification, and a, a good number don't come because the DPR would have already issued them an environmental impact assessment clearance. So some that come come maybe because the banks that are going to fund the process is asking for. And uh, Federal Ministry of Environment Certification, or in recent times, the Nigerian Post Authority is insisting that without Federal Ministry of Environment Certification, they cannot build. And uh, that's where we have been having progress in the last few years. And uh, our own certification process is such that, one, we involve the states, the local governments, and we make it a very open and transparent process, apart from the fact that it is the only legal process. We, there is a law that backs it. You know, the other ones are uh, processes that are maybe because the line sector uh, uh, garbage regulation is very uh, strong and powerful. You know, so one of the advantages of making it you know, an open process is that it allows for public participation. Where these 
uh, reports come, we put it on newspaper advertisements and radio. Even before the reports are prepared, the public is adequately engaged. And then the state government and the local governments are also equally adequately engaged. But we, all these things started when some considerable damage has already been done. And uh, there are ways in which this can be uh, improved. So one of the things that I just wanted to add is that most of the time, it's, uh, all the time that the law gave is that we should do it before the construction. The idea is all the impacts that we see should be mainstreamed back into the design. And at that time, we would have taken over a lot of things that we need to address. And of course, the mitigation measures become easier at that time. And, uh, uh, but then, like I said, it is not. In Ogara, in our books, we have seven uh, 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 tank farms, and only one Prudent Energy have an EIA for its gas and then the PIA permit when we insisted because they have already built that they must have a post impact assessment and which they did. And I remember when we visited that field, there's only about a house or two and they wanted to acquire that house, but the man just put it at a very exorbitant price. And so negotiations were going on. I think at the end of the day, they were able to uh, pay the man and move him out of it. Of course, the moment one has gets money very big, other people start coming so that they can stay within the land and of course they know more uh, tank farms will come. And of course, before we understood it, we went for follow-up programs, which we always have, because when we give you a permit, you build up, during building, we follow you up to see that all those uh, impact mitigations are taken uh, care of. Then during uh, operations, we do environmental compliance monitoring to, to make sure that the operational phase uh, impacts are clearly and taken. It's in the course of doing that with Protein Energy, we found that others have already come and built. And uh, well, of course, when you engage them, they have already gotten uh, approval uh, to build from DPR, which we, I think that's the set through right. But the idea is that to link between that uh, permit that they got to acquire the EIA before they built, that's where the synergy is linked, uh, the gap is created. So out of the seven, only one have the EIA uh, uh, permit. Then the other one, cybernetics. Because they have already built an operating, of course, the only thing to do is to go for body. In Ijegun, the same, almost the same thing happened. Most of them have an EIA permit. Uh, EIA permit, except uh, two, stallionary uh, oil. I think that's the one that have that uh, fire incident. Mm -hmm. It has no EIA permit. And then Western oil and gas, has no permit. Ogara. Talk about Ogara and Ubeji. Okay. Uh -huh. Ubeji. We are dealing with them in clusters. Okay. U Ubeji, no permit at all except matrix that have uh, audit. And about three or four have applied to the Federal Mission Environment for permitting, but their process is yet to be uh, completed. Good. But for the trade zone, what we did in conjunction with the Lagos State uh, Ministry of uh, the Lagos State Government generally is. And out of the four, only one have gone through. Matrix is the only one that have gone through. Yes, I mean in our records. Yeah, in our records. That means we have taken them on board to pursue them further to see the environmental situation. But if they have seven, we have not uh, been able to get those ones. So one have done audit, the ministry, no any other permit. The need for for both agencies to work together. Because at the end of the day, it's going to be for the common good of everyone. And it, it's also good you heard them complimenting MPA. The cameras were blocking me. I'm sure Honorable Nari was shaking his head and smiling. But with the mask, now we cannot see his mouth or see his face. You know, so it's not deliberate that they are saying that you're not carrying them along. They are supposed to go and do the environmental impact assessment before you even give any approval for the tank farm owners to go and do anything. But they go ahead and do, and then come back. They come back to them much later. And he'll be given an example. Maybe some of them, the banks are asking for the impact assessment, environmental impact assessment. That's why they come. So it's important that both agencies work together. But like I said earlier on, all it takes is one fire and to consume an entire community. And God forbid that that happens. But like they say, accident does not happen. It's cost. 
So let's hear from you. Through our processes, when we are licensing these facilities, there is a minimum requirement for firefighting that we expect each tank farm to have that in case of an emergency, a fire outbreak, it should be able to be contained. Yes, uh, there is always room for improvement. And one of the uh, issues we have seen, like uh, in our last, uh, last inspection and assessment, we have instructed and almost all the tank farms there, in addition to the fire water tanks that they have, we have asked them to install water lift pumps into the lagoon, directly into the submersibles, into the sea, so that if there is an emergency, you just kick that and you will be able to contain, contain the fire. And also, we are communicating the recommendation of the Federal Fire Service for them, for the uh, tank farm operators, without, like you said, waiting for the outcome of this investigation, to provide adequate for the right kind of chemicals that they use to mix with water so that they can co contain an outbreak if it occurs. But most importantly, we are working harder to make sure it doesn't happen in the first place by instituting standard operating procedures that will prevent that from occurring in the first instance. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, about the EIA, I, I think it is uh, correct to note that there may not be the proper synergy with, uh, with the Federal Ministry of Environment as uh, we will want to see. But it also boils down to uh, having multiple regulators in an industry. As we speak, the Lagos State Environment uh, Ministry is also complaining. We are acting with the powers of the Petroleum Act and subsidiary legislations. Everything we have done is in consonance with that. This was uh, the Petroleum Act predates the establishment of Federal Ministry of Environment. And when the Federal Ministry of Environment was established, our act was not changed to create a role for Federal Ministry of Environment in the oil sector, unfortunately. But this is something that we can actually work together with them if we have that handshake. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it may not be adequate, but it's something that we are looking into very seriously so that we can have that synergy because it is good for everyone. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't uh, do any harm to have an extra layer of uh, scrutiny. Um, during the last interface we had, Ministry of the Federal Ministry of Environment agreed that most of the EIAs, the few that the few tank farm operators that got the EIA, started the process for EI uh, processing when the tank farm has already uh, begun. I know very well that the EIAs are usually supposed to commence even before the takeoff of the building of the tank farm itself. What do you do if uh, a tank farm has already commenced and uh, EIA has to now be carried out? Uh, how do you balance it? How does it take care of the social and environmental impact on the residents? Because it's not just about the fire, uh, outbreak is also about the health factors that come to play. 
And then uh, the, my second question is, if uh, the Federal Ministry of Environment points out that a stakeholder, like a tank farm operator, is yet to have, like he just said now, that is only uh, 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 prudent, uh, prudent uh, tank farm operators that have the EIA. What do you do where you have tank farm operators already functioning without a valid EIA? And then these EIAs or your report or your procedure for re, uh, certification, do you do it yearly? Or is just a blanket approval? Once it's given, it's given. We have an HSE uh, division in the Department of Petroleum Resources that oversee an EIA. The EIA, the Federal Ministry of Environment is talking about, is the one that is anchored by them. We do an EIA, and all the consultants uh, that uh, conduct that EIA are registered with us. So there is an EIA, the one that they said they don't have is the one done by Federal Ministry of Environment. So we are running a parallel process, okay? We have our own EIA, and they have theirs. So what is in contention is that when they are doing the EIA, which is mandatory to us, they don't consult Federal Ministry of Environment. Not that it is absent. You know, we have our own EIA. I wouldn't want to say a standalone EIA, but it is a requirement and you have to do it and it has to be a consultant with the, uh, uh, that is registered with us that can provide that service. And on the issue of licensing, actually there are, uh, the process is when you are building, you conduct all the necessary documentation and processes. You, you make a presentation to us, a technical presentation to us, so that we see if the, uh, the plan you have is buildable, if it is technically sound. And then we do some other um, safety audits. We do hazard. We identify all the hazards, hazard and hazard, then hazard and operability, and all the necessary technical uh, checks that we need to do before we grant you an approval. And when you are constructing, Usually we devolve from head office, we devolve that to our zonal offices. We require that you place a DPL staff on the project team so that what you are building exactly reflects what you, what you submitted to us. You know, and after you finish building, we'll do a final inspection which we use what you, pro what you submitted to us when you are applying for the approval to construct. Make sure that what you build is what you submitted to us and that, yes, you can operate it safely. You also have to deposit with us a standard operating procedure that takes care of all the safety of that, uh, of, of that facility. So uh, it is a very uh, thorough process and when you start operating every year, it is only depot license that we renew every year. In fact, only this year we introduce what we call uh, annual work program, in which we sit down with the operators and they tell us what they are going to do next year, how it is going to impact their operations, and any major changes they are going to make on the facilities, they have to tell us upfront, so that we sign off on it, and if there is need, we make allowance for maybe shutting down that uh, facility so that it doesn't impact general supply to, to the country. So we are doing all, 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 all that, ma'am, and, and more. And more are coming probably by the time uh, the committee is done with its work. If there is any area where we, we need to improve, we will. But 
definitely we identify the, the fact that we need to have a handshake with uh, Federal Ministry of Environment and we'll work on that. And yours might not be tenable before the bank. So specific, you have a role to play, but you have to ensure that there's a, a very uh, workable and functional synergy that can, you cannot control that. What is, what is the time lag that you've given to this time firm to actually actualize the procedure and we put everything in place? So that at least when we are coming there to inspect now, we should be expecting to find all those things in place. If not, I, I recommend that you shut them down. At the purpose, where you have all those time farm, is it, did you say commercial or industrial uh, purposes? Uh, please, so that I can, before you give approval, the permitted land use to restate what I said in, in the last uh, meeting. And as we are all aware, land matters are domiciled in the state government. So the state government has to sign off on the development, no matter what the purpose of the land is. So because uh, I think uh, one of the honorables, I, I can't uh, get the name, ask whether before we allocate the the land for constructing the depot, we take cognizance of that. Actually, it is outside our uh, mandate to design, designate a land for a purpose. It is the state government goal. In case where somebody is building from federal government, it is the federal government that does that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. The inland uh, tank farms that NMPC has across the country. Most of these tank farms that we're talking about now are tank farms that are close to uh, ports uh, environment because they have river channels that are deep enough for large vessels to, you know, to bed. And most of these areas are already under the jurisdiction of the Nigerian Ports Authority, areas that are already designated as port area. I remember in uh, in one of my discussions with uh, colleagues from the Lagos State uh, Ministry of Environment at a certain point, I was trying to tell them that, look, when anything that has to ports and harbor is an exclusive uh, jurisdiction of the federal government. So uh, uh, by default, some areas have already been mapped out to, to them. It's not the Nigerian Post Authority that we allocate those areas that they have already been given statutorily for ports for these operate, operators. It is when they've gotten this land, I understand that they will now approach the Department of Petroleum Resources for their licensing and what have you. The challenges that we are facing uh, environmentally is not just from the tank farm operators, even other port and terminal operators with the heavy trucks and everything. It's still, it's just that for this one, it, the fire challenge seems to be a major uh, concern. And I also want to explain that the different you know, levels of government, that synergy, for example, when the Federal Fire Service was making their presentation, I was uh, fortunate to be here. Um, I just felt that my response would have been each of those tank farms already have fire approvals from the Lagos State Fire Service before maybe the DPR will announce, okay, let us give them a license. If uh, the Federal Fire Service is a recent uh, creation, so they are continuing with what the in fairness to tank farm operators, virtually all the government approvals that they are expected to have, they have them. In ours is even perhaps the last one, you know, when they are under pressure, they come to us and then we don't see how, before we even give, we make sure that all these other approvals are in place because we realize that ours is, let's say, the approval of last resort. That's the one the international banks will honor, that's the one the international community will honor. You know, so the areas are already marked for industrial activity. It is just that going by the urban and regional planning laws, the state governments do not create enough uh, buffer zones for, uh, and 
it away, it's going to cost the state government money too, because in the southern part of the country, land tenure uh, system is quite different from the north. The state cannot just take a swath of land and say no development should go on here. Somebody has to pay for it. And I think that's where the that's, those are some of the things that we should have done to you know ameliorate some of the challenges that we are facing today. Basically, when we go to site. Um, as one of uh, the honorable members stated, most times the parties that are concerned do not come at the same time. And so anyone who uh, states his case seems to be the winner of the case. I think when you visit site, you will know. I want to also clearly uh, urge honorable members to visit site and then see specifically the number of areas that MPA gave approval for all these tank farms to be cited. They are uh, very few when you talk about lands that were allotted by MPA. But Mr. Chairman, if you permit, I want my general manager, Land and Asset Administration, to speak specifically on this issue. When it comes to the uh, tank farms at Ijegu and um, Olgara, the first point I need to make clear is that those tank farms are actually not sitting on MPA land. They are not on NPA land, and if they were on NPA land, those tank farms would probably not be there because we are very careful in planning our lands. We take um, note of all the regulations before we allow developments to be done on NPA land. And we are aware that um, because of our experience in our Papa, with tank farms, the federal government had in 2008 directed that no further tank farms should be built in Lagos. Aware of this directive, we had not given any approval for any tank farm in Lagos since 2008. So, eight. Yes. And all of those tank farms at Ijegung and Kirikiri sprang up after this period. They came up after this period. And like it has been mentioned here earlier, the issue of building any facility even, but especially with tank farms, starts with the planning authorization. You need to have the right authority to give approval for that development before you talk about EIAs and licenses. So in my view, it, the problem actually came about due to lack of sanity or lack of implementation on the part of authorizing authorities, planning authorities, I want to say. In this regard, I would have expected that um, along with NPA, Lagos State uh, planning authorities would have been here to you know, explain really how these tank farms come about because they have really some uh, they need to tell this committee how the authorization for building those tank farms came about knowing that there has been federal government ban on tank farms in lagos we had cause sometime in 2012 to request that a tank farm be built at uh, Lakey Free Trade Zone. That is what the director environment started referring to. We knew there was a ban, and we had to approach the federal government to seek for a waiver. Now, a waiver that, in view of the ban on tank farms, could this tank farm that is to be cited at a brand new Lakey Fred Free Trade Zone be approved, please. And approval came from the presidency that yes, it could be cited. So that is the only town farm that we have anything to do with. And we had to clear with the federal government. You say you did not give permit. Yes, the, the, produ the products come through MP yes, and the, chart, the canalization, the, rock, the river, the water through which they transport the vessels go through to 
to the town to the channel, yes, sir. all those vessels are approved by you. You know what they are carrying because you gave us all that all that information. So I think it was the starting point. Even before you come to EIA and DPR. Now, if uh, somebody went and bought a land in residential area and decided he wanted to build a tank farm and he had started and he had got planning approval, he approaches the DPR, DPR gives him license, he approaches um, Federal Minister of Environment, got an EIA approval and has started building and he has done a jetty to receive uh, products. Usually, usually, that is when NPA gets the situation in its hand, where a tank farm is already in existing, a jetty was built to receive products, and it is on the channel, and then we are faced with the situation and the requirement approval to stem in vessels there to receive products. That is the trend that has been happening. It has lands where, you know, ports are built and we have lands for expansion that we grant on leases, you know, to investors. If it is our land, yes, we have to give approval for developments on those lands. If it is not our land, then it is not our responsibility to give such approvals. We do have the right to also give approval on um, you know, areas that are along our channel up to 100 meters. So that is where jetties actually come in. Usually they build tank farms or stacking areas or port facilities, and then you build a jetty where you will interface with the ships to take cargo. For those jetties that are within 100 meters from the water into your land, NP has responsibility to, you know, approve what is built there. And all the agencies, or, I mean, all the investors are aware of this uh, provision in our act, usually approach us. We have quite a few that have built actually without even appro approaching NPA. But in many cases, they approach NPA to build jetties. So you don't start off your mind, please. So do you involve the respective uh, uh, planning uh, uh, agencies in the states? in granting those uh, approvals. Do you do it in, in consultation with them or you expressly need to do that? We do it on our own, we expressly do it on account of the fact that uh, we are a planning authority in our own rights, in our lands. There is a Supreme Court judgment against Lagos State Government in this respect. Where it is NPA Portland, we are not subject to Lagos State regulations or state regulations for that matter. So we are able to plan our lands. Yes, land sir. use is the responsibility of the respective state government. Whether it is a federal land or any other personal land domiciled in that state. Now, I will advise that uh, you look at that Supreme Court because it is this misinterpretation because we uh, engaged with the landlords Yes, in all these things. Now, if you're on your own, you don't consult Lagos State, and if your development is inconsistent with the land use yes. of that area designated by Lagos State, there's a problem. Yes. And that is actually where these things are you know, happening. So I will, on my own, on behalf of the committee, solicit that all those areas, all those developments, that you on your own have granted approval for this tax fund on that reference also avail to the committee so that they will have a, will speak to the document. They have not granted any approval in respect of that because they are not even sitting on NPA land. And so we did not give any approval for them. We, if, if they were on our NPA land, I said it, if they were on NPA land, we could have relied on, well, subject to, uh, you know, legal interpretation. Maybe I, I'm not able to interpret the Supreme Court judgment. We could plan and give approval on our own NPA land. But we did not do that in respect of Ijegun or Kirikiri or uh, Ogara. But we are open to collaboration with Lagos State Government. DPR and um, 
Foreign Minister of Environment have told you that we have got working relationships with them. So why we have to consult agencies of government, especially where the law requires that, we are open and we always do that. The issue will finally, you know, give based on uh, uh, a specific, give a recommendation based on specific uh, uh, um, observations or what the document we spoke to. So that's actually what I'm saying. So whether it is big okay. or whether it is small uh, bank firm, whether it is outside your MP or within your MP line, please uh, fill us with those uh, yeah. answers. So we had a meeting with the uh, satellite town community, the uh, satellite town forum, and then the town farm owners. And in that meeting, we gave two weeks. But I was just one day old in office. My predecessor was even in that meeting because he was uh, midwifing the, pro, uh, the process of reconciliation and all that before I came in. And we gave them two weeks. And from March till now, none of the parties came back to MPA to like report either their inability to resolve or the steps taken so far. And now I'm noticing the same trend. We have flown all the way from Lagos to this place, and now we do not have uh, community reps. We do not have tank farm owners. I just want to appeal to the committee to not just back, but also bite, in the sense that you cannot bring a matter to, the, to, to a committee the National Assembly, especially the House of Reps, is like representative of the people. I have stated it for the umpteen time. And you are being living true to your constitutional responsibility. I don't think they should be slack in this. But today we, call, we, we, we are here and we do not have community reps. We do not have town farm owners. Please, they, they, by the time you come to site, try and ensure and enforce that all the parties be present so that we won't the winning cases when the other party is not present. Let all of us be together. Uh, I give another analogy of a little child who saw his father's side of the plate loaded with seafood and everything and says, Father, they taught us in school in geography that the world is rotating. And they turned the plate to face himself where it is well loaded. The father said, My son, you are too young. Please let the world be as it is. We are, we are going back and forth. Please let all of us be there and state our cases. I don't know. We pray that they are okay. I'm aware that flights only started from Benin on Monday. I hope flights are actually going in and out. So whatever the case in is, we'll give them the benefit. But the unfortunate thing is that we don't know shave their hair in the absence. But we're going to discuss with DPR now, with yourselves, and with the Federal Ministry of uh, Environment. We are going to be in Lagos August 10th through to 14th. I'm sure by the time you get to the office now, your letters will be there. We don't want to mix up things of the schedule and what we expect you to bring. So, DPR, please, when we leave Lagos on the 14th, the week after, from 17th to maybe 21st, we're going to be in Ogara and Ubeji. We will do you letters to that effect, and we will also send letters to them. I will go ahead and call the names of the companies in operating Ogara and Ubeji right now, because there are questions that came up here that they could have answered, but they are not here to answer those questions. I mean, DPR came from Lagos, same thing with MPA. Yeah, even though I know that the uh, Federal Ministry of Environment are here in Abuja, it was an effort to leave the office to come here. So we cannot uh, invite people based on the power of the parliament to come here so that we can resolve issues. Number one, the motion that brought us here, there are actually two referrals. And both of them were anchored on the fact that these tank farms are operating around residential premises. And I have said it from day one. We will try and do a win-win. The tank farm owners borrowed money from the banks to build. Like one of them said the other day, that they are still paying back the loans. And they said NNPC is owing it. You remember I asked the NNPC man, if I owe this for more than 24 months, how do you expect them to do CSR in the community and then um, pay workers and remain in business? 
So we must hear from them. We must hear from them. So we are, when we agree to go to Lagos, we discuss with the tank farm owners in Lagos on these dates. But they will not have the opportunity, Ogara and Uber, they will not have the opportunity now to refuse or accept the date from 17th to 21st. So this committee will visit both locations. And then thereafter, we will have stakeholders meeting. So you will visit locations with us, you stakeholders here, and then we will have a meeting in a hall like this, either in Wari or in Benin. So they, the CEOs, are better be present. But like I said, I don't know, I pray they are OK. God forbid bad things they were driving by road or flying, anything happened, we don't, I don't know. But I assume we will hear from them. But on that 17, the CEOs must be present. And every document we requested from them must be presented. So I will go ahead and read the name of the companies we invited from Ogara. First of my list is Red Oil Limited, Prudent Energy, Cybernetics International, Nepa Oil and Gas Limited, Otni Brooks Limited, Fradro Oil and Gas Limited. These ones are the tank farm companies in Ogara. And then the ones in Ubeji are one Matrix Energy, Bluefin, Pinnacle Oil and Gas, A and E Tank Farm, AIDA Depot, KOP Depot, and AYM Shafa. They were notified. And they are not here today. The, the last week Wednesday, I thank you all again for coming. What we said was, if they say 35% or almost 40% of the petroleum. petroleum products are coming from, from Kirikiri, Ijeko, Axis, if anything happens to that today, it will lead to scarcity in the country. Yes. Same thing with the Ubeji and Ogara, Axis. We don't want anything to happen to this. We are not going to make, we are not here to make drastic decisions. But what we are saying, you cannot be living with, with residents, with the community, and we don't know what safety measures we have put in place. From most of the documents we have, there are things that are not right. And we are basically just making a recommendation. As we speak to you now, Federal Fire Service are there, and we are expecting their report. So let me quickly add, we had written to Federal Ministry of Environment and to, to NIMASA to provide us with the safety audit reports. I know you also have that. We need that. Because like we told the Jagun community last week, we want to make sure that those in the community are sleeping with both eyes closed while the business is running, the town farm owners are running their business well. So that in that way, they can live side by side. That is our interest. But if one cannot live without the others, the other, they will make that decision. But we are not making that decision today. That's why we must hear from everyone. Thank you. All land title documents of the approved tank farms. For well, here, you say you don't have. Did you say you didn't approve for them? Or you say you didn't approve we for them? We said they are not our land. They are not your land? No. no. So whatever land document you approve, let's have them. OK. We will do that. In Lagos, in, in two weeks' time. OK. Yeah, we have stakeholders meeting on the 12th. You should have all that. On a vulnerable place, in short. DPR. Please. OK. Any any document requires that we have all available? OK, the safety audit report is very important from 2013 to 2019. How much has happened this year? Carried?